TitleMatchNetwork.com. How different was Kaz working with him as compared to when he was your trainer? Oh, night and day. One, like I said, Taz is the kind of person that you got to earn his respect. And once, you know, once I started earning his respect a little by a little bit at a time, and um, actually my first you know, week on the road, um, I was riding with Taz. So, um, you, know, I, you know, after them car rides, I got to learn a lot about him. And, you know, Taz will talk. And he's funny. He's the funniest man. Uh, he's so hilarious. And um, it was great, man. I got nothing but respect for Taz. I love Taz. And what were your memories of your first angle with Taz? Pain. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember... Um, I remember because, you know, what a lot of people don't know, you know, most people's first match is, you know, in a high school or, you know, with a trainer or wherever. My first match was on SmackDown. First match ever on SmackDown. And I remember walking out of the curtain and walking into the ring. And from the time I got to the ring, I didn't hear a thing. I could not hear anything. It was like everything was completely quiet. And it was like I couldn't even see the people in there. And I guess it was nerves. But um, Taz took care of me. He was great. He was wonderful to work with. He really was. He was my first three matches. And I, I'm actually honored that I'm very honored that, that you know, I was able to wrestle him first. I, I would have wanted to be him or Al Snow. My first match ever with Taz, what we touched on earlier, my first match ever, two things happened in that match in, in, in five minutes. In five minutes, I got my jaw knocked offline, got my jaw, dis well, I guess, dislocated, and I busted my eardrum from two pops from Taz. Did he mean to do it? No. I mean, was I, you know, did it hurt? Could I hear out of this ear for a week? No. It's a business. Did I bitch about it? Absolutely not. How different was Al from my trainer to a work with him in the ring? <sighs> to be honest with you, he wasn't any different at all. Al's, he's a father figure. He's, he's where he got, where, where my relationship with Al started progressing was once we started riding together, you know, learning more about him outside of wrestling, you know, more about him and um, how much of a nerd he is. And he collects comic books and, and watches. And I mean, he's got all these nerdy stuff in his house. And, and I used to love to just bust his balls all the time. And um, just getting to know Al on a, on a more personal level, was um, in the ring he's the same because in the ring he, he's he, he's going to train you and he's going to teach you no matter what you're doing. Yes, I can. We were in a Canadian city, and um, I'm not going to mention which Canadian city, but a good Canadian city. And I was traveling with Al at the time, and we walk into a gym, and inside the gym there was a trainer, and she was hot as shit, and we're shooting the we're shooting them, shooting the breeze with each other for a little bit, and whatnot, and um, come to find out, I think she, yeah, she was married, and we had a house show later on that evening, and she asked me, she was like, you know, what time, you know, what time's the show? I was like, well, the show, our house show is an hour down the road, and after that, we're going to a different city, you know. I was like, so I'm about to see you next time I'm in town. She's like, well, how long do you have to leave for the show? I mean, about two hours. She's like, where's your hotel room? She's like, Comfort Inn. She's like, can I go with you? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And needless to say, I was, I was, I was busy up until probably, I'd say, two minutes before Al was knocking on my door. <laughs> Let's go. We're gonna be late. So, that was a, that was a God. I mean, I'm like, I have to call her. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I remember going to my first wrestling match when I was seven years old. And um, I still remember who headlined it. It was uh, Ric Flair versus Magnum TA. It was at, at the Richmond Coliseum. And <coughs> growing up, I grew up in um, grew up in Virginia. And, you know, NWA was big when I was growing up in Virginia. You know, and I remember every um, Saturday morning and um, Saturday evening watching uh, – Watching uh, NWA, watching on TBS, and you know, watching people like Midnight Express, uh, Four Horsemen, Rock and Roll Express, and yeah, I was definitely I was the biggest I was the biggest fan, the biggest fan. 
Can you talk a little bit about your uh, collegiate baseball career? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. Um, I went to a small school in uh, Virginia called Eastern Mennonite University. After I was after I was in um, high school, I, I was a catcher in high school, so I got recruited um, to go to go to this this um, school um, and play play catcher. My first first year there, I broke my hand, and um, they moved me to outfield. And boy, I loved it. I hated I hated catching. I was actually very excited to be moved to the outfield. When um. Uh, spent spent all four years there playing. My first two years, I struggled a bit. And then my last two years, I played center field. My last two years, and and was um was um all conference for two years, and you know hitting the high four hundreds my last two years, and and was um played played quite quite well. I'd like to think, and got a couple pro looks afterwards. Uh, were you drafted? Was not drafted. No, I had a couple tryouts, and um, I went actually moved to uh, Portland, Oregon, and played um, on a semi-pro league out there. Hopefully to you know keep the keep the dream alive. But that um, played one year out there, and then and then realized that it's time to hang it up. What gonna happen? I didn't hit for power enough. I was a I was a good average hitter, but couldn't you know did couldn't hit the long ball as frequently as a as an outfielder should. So. Do you have any good recruiting stories? Any good recruiting? Yeah, I got a really, actually a really good recruiting story. This is, um, so I just finished up my senior year, you know, just got done. I hit 459 that year. So, yeah, quite respectable. Um, I think it was tops, probably, I think top in the entire conference I played in. And um, so a Diamondback scout was flying in. And I'm um, going to try me out, try a bunch of other guys out. And so me and my coach drove two hour drive to Richmond, Virginia for the tryout and where well, they had their own pitcher to throw to us and everything. And so get there, get out of the car, walk around to the back of the car for my truck for my own tryouts for about an hour. You know, they run you, let you hit, let you throw, open up the trunk, go to get my stuff and my gloves not there. So I got my first professional trial ever and forget my forget my baseball gloves. So. <laughs> I don't think I made a quite a good impression on them. <laughs> what do you think about steroids in baseball? I don't think it's a big. I mean, is it a problem? Yeah, but I, I really don't care to be honest with you. I mean, if it's something that, if it's um, Jose Canseco's book, I read Juice was actually I liked it. I thought it was a good book, and I don't know. I think if people. If people are willing to, you know, to to do something to, you know, make themselves better, why not? You know, why not? Is it? Um, I find it hard to believe that that steroids affects, you know, you know Barry Bonds. Yeah, he's he's a phenomenal hitter. He's a great great, great hitter, but you know his hand eye coordination didn't do steroids. I just don't believe that. You know, can he hit for more power because of it? Maybe. I don't know. But then again, you know, long ball is what, you know, puts ass in the seats. That's what, you know, and, and owners know that. People don't pay money for tickets. They don't They don't go out on a Saturday afternoon with their entire family to watch a pitching duel. You know, they go out on a Saturday afternoon to watch guys like McGuire and Bonds and, you know, all these great home run hitters from the past, and, you know, guys from the present, you know, knock the ball out of the park. You know, I don't, I personally, it's my belief. I don't see anything. I don't see anything wrong with it. You know, they're grown men. They can make the decisions for themselves. Title